We'll be talking about those tech choices that are going to be defining, well, I think the rest of this format post the WCQs. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that Raigeki so you guys don't miss out on blowing up your opponent's field. So, Raigeki, I think, and Dark Hole were some of the best solutions to the current meta that we saw Tempai playing out of the WCQs out here. I think it really put some, you know, foresight onto the community here to look at this and go, huh, maybe we need to, you know, we had people talking about board breakers out here and that they would be the saviors of the format. It appears to be the case, actually. You know, going second, watching your opponent not set up an Omni Negate, this huge field just for you to go, boom, attack directly, is is comical to me, all right? Um, we are really just in that phase of the game. So I wanted to point out here that I find it very, very cute that the Raikeki and Dark Hole being these power cards, again, huh, Took how many years for that to actually happen? Mulcharmi Perulia. Now, for those of you that I, I mentioned in another video, I've heard countless people going, why would you invest in this card? It's not worth it. Um, the community doesn't have Max C. Um, I feel like Perulia has been slotted into decks as the missing Max C. You know, like players are looking at this card, they're like, I'll take a draw too. Like, okay, like, that, that's fine by me. Like, I'm not really doing anything else with it. You know, maybe you'll get another hand trap or something along the way, like a Nibiru, for example. Um, that's why people are willing to spend, you know, the 45 plus dollars on this card right now, because the card is that strong for the course of the meta. It is defining those texts out there. And I think if people are gonna continue to ignore this, um, they're going to be more pissed when we see this card possibly cross over the $50 mark. I, I think this card's here to stay uh, for a while. Next up is Spooky Dogwood. You know, we've had three discussion, two discussions about Spooky Dogwood. Um, I have to mention it as a tech choice because of the stupid time rules that we've been seeing out here. And I agree. It is really annoying to see the time rules being the way that they are, you know, Spooky Dogwood shouldn't hypothetically be an issue, but because the game works in the way that it does, you know, you're seeing Dogwood come in and steal these game threes from people just because, well, guess what? They drew the Dogwood. Um, you can't really tell your opponent to play faster because a lot of these combo decks do take a little bit of time, and I, I do want to re-emphasize that. It is a time, this game is time consuming. It's all there is to it. You can you can argue every which way you want, but Spooky Dogwood is now a defining tech choice of the current meta, and probably many, many more metas to actually come. So Book of Eclipse has returned back into the meta as a, I mean, it's the quick play, turn down your opponent stuff. I mean, your opponent can draw some cards during the end phase, but you're probably going to clear up their board, which, in my opinion, is pretty good. Uh, this, this card has turned into the ultimate double-edged either defense or offensive card that you could be looking at, all right? And I, I love that about it, all right? It is a free emergency button for yourself, too. Um, you know, most of the extra modes that you get with this card might not really matter all that much, but I want to mention them because multi, even triple-purposing cards out here like the Book of Eclipse that we're seeing, you know, these decks actually use Order Force, you know, like an Omni Negate to get, you know, one of the more pe pesky, you know, evenly matches to stick out here. That's what you're looking at in terms of the powerhouse plays. So happy to see that. Dimension Shifter. Uh, back to the 10,000 arguments of why Shifter is an unfair card. I think Shifter has been a necessary evil for a majority of this format. Um, I don't give a crap if you're a Snake Eyes player or not, and I don't really care if you think it's unfair that you can't combo under Shifter. I don't think it's fair that you can take 15 minutes to build a full board in Snake Eyes and just enjoy your block dragon. There has to be some sort of counterplay. And that's what Shifter is giving to the meta. It's giving that wrench that is meant to slow you down. And a lot of people are looking at this and they're like, nah, 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 Shifter, it's gotta go. 
<laughs> like they think they're from the dark side of the internet, you know. For now, I think yes, shifter will remain a problem. And no matter how you want to look at this card, whether or not for better or for worse the game, it might be, it has done a fair share of trying to fix the meta. Next up is Azarune. Um, this has been your top hat hair card of choice. Uh, you do have the new support card that came out with the top hat hair, which attempts to be like a mini skill drain and things. You also have the uh, embodiment of the Apophis trap card that people were trying to play as well. Azarune has been the competitive one because it is a free negate. All right, and that's what people care about this. And I think you're going to continue to see Azarune be the one that's going to sit on the top of the pinnacle out here as that card that is going to, you know, really, really, really just ruin a lot of things. So, yes, Azarune, good card. Solo hat trick. It's an alright card. Apophis, if you're playing more counter trap cards, sure, but if you're playing competitively, just get the gosh darn as Rune so you can have it. Alright, if you're playing the hair. Next up is the uh, the Moon Eating Dragon. Now, this is a level 7 synchro, and you're probably like, who in the world is playing this? It's Tempai that's playing Vagnawa. Uh, Vagnawa, basically, on Synchro Summon, you know, you're effect, gains 300 attack for each level of the non tuners that you use. And then you get to do our favorite line of text on this. Inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each level that the tuner had. You mean to tell me that you just give Tempai burn cards? Why, yes, they did. Isn't that great? Ah, so happy to know that if for some reason a game against Tempai has taken me 45 minutes to try to close out. When we get to that very, very precious game three that they just need to stick a battle phase to probably win. Just knowing that they have a main phase. Oh, oops, sorry. Take some damage. Tee hee hee. What are you going to do about it? Isn't that, uh, isn't that really, really stupid? Simultaneous, simultaneous equation cannons. Uh, this card has been the card that has recently overwritten Labyrinth um, in its success. Banish or fusion monster and two exceed monsters with the same rank from your extra deck whose combined levels and ranks equal the total number of monsters in both players' hands and on the field. Then you can apply uh, this effect. So you can return two of your banished monsters to the extra deck, one exceeds and one fusion, whose combined levels and ranks equal level of the rank or of one face of monster opponent controls, and banish all cards that they control. So basically, you're getting a free board wipe off of this, and it's a banish off of this. I Labyrinth doesn't give two craps about its extra deck. Banishing four or five cards off your opponent's field just wins you a game. Uh, and that's what you're doing with this card. It is blowout central, and it is so strong. Jinzo. Jinzo made it? Yeah. So Jinzo, I saw Jinzo was starting to see a, a side play in a couple of decks. I was like, okay. Shout out to the Golden Lord over here, too, for being a 3,500 attack point monster. Didn't make it in, in the tech choices here. But Jinzo, um, being able to deny these trap decks a chance to do things is Frickin' hilarious. I mean, Jinzo is a classic card that we've seen show up every once in a while. When, you know, Labyrinth kind of starts to get out of control a little bit, or you're looking at, oh, you know, maybe I don't want to deal with traps today. So, you know, we side deck in the Jinzo to try to offset the craziness that is coming with that. And that's why you're siding Jinzo right now, is that card to try to balance out the game so you're not losing to the stupidness. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Jinzo is a tech choice. What now? <laughs> We've really made it very far in this game. And our last tech choice here is actually Fiendsmith. Uh, I've seen... Th this wasn't so much like a WCQ tech choice. Uh, I would say, like, it's been kind of cool to see the Fiendsmith and how it's been incorporating into these different decks. Another classic example, I think, was Memento, which I didn't actually think would be playing the Fiendsmith stuff, but the TCG version of the deck just said, Snap Crack, we'll put that crap on in there, and we're going to play this. Um, Fiendsmith definitely has changed the game. I don't know for the better or for the worse, but it, it's done it in a way that has made people very intrigued 
with the game. And I'm very happy to see, you know, where we're going to go with this. So, overall, interesting, interesting stuff so far. So please, those are your tech choices. Leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.